everyone, this is Fantasy Esque, and welcome back to Vampire Amazon with the Salazar Coven. The day has finally come. Princess Athena is about to age up into an immortal, meaning that we can finally challenge the queen. And if you're wondering, wait, how does that correlate to her being able to challenge the queen? Well, we have been working very hard on getting her vampiric ranks up, and she, along with her sister Freya, is now a grand master. A vampire and she has some pretty cool abilities stacked up so I'm gonna be showing you guys that after she ages up but basically we're gonna blot the candles for her everyone is gathered around and once that is done I'm not gonna give her a makeover or anything and normally I would do something like that but to be honest if we're gonna age like I mean if we're gonna challenge the queen and pretty much end the series. I don't feel like it's worth it to go ahead and give her a makeover at this stage because I always give my queens a brand new makeover uh, when they take on the crown. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but basically we'll see how things go. Athena is challenging the queen straight after um, she blows out the candles. She's going to get her final trait and then we'll see what kind of person I guess she might be and an inkling as to what kind of queen she might be. So we'll basically be doing that. Um, and if she doesn't win, it's not a big deal because then Athena, not Athena, geez, for I keep mixing the sisters up, but Freya is going to be the one to challenge the queen afterwards. So basically, unless Freya, I mean, Athena wins right now, the two sisters are going to be taking turns, battling it out with Narcissa until one of them comes out on top. So that's what's going on. Let's not waste any time and actually jump into the episode. Okay, walls down, everyone's gathered around. Look at that. We have a yellow theme, yellow and white theme, yellow, white, cream sort of theme. Yeah, and Nymphadora, what's up with the umbrella? Come on, get rid of that. We don't need it. Also, it is 5 a.m. So before we blow out the candles, um, well, you guys already know that Morgana is a grandmaster and so is Narcissa. Well, guess what? Freya has reached a grandmaster level. So we have that. I'm not sure if it was like that in the previous episode, but it is now. And Athena, I mean, yeah, Athena, I keep mixing the sisters up, this is crazy. Athena is a grandmaster as well. She just became a grandmaster on uh, Sunday, I think. Or no, I think it was Saturday. So there we go, just newly. But if we look at Freya and her powers, she basically has all the mites which you need to have. So the basic um, cutoff or the requirement to challenge the queen is that you have to be an immortal and you have to have three, like you have to be an occult master and also have vampiric might. But then on top of that, Freya has all three of this um, like night powers and then she's got pretty much sun resistance. She's immune to the sun just like her mother. And all of these abilities are actually shared by Princess Athena. So she also has the Master of Darkness and then she has the Perfect Sun Resistance. So basically, those two sisters are never going to die from the sun. So I'm very happy about that. But this also means that Athena is kind of like a royal prodigy. And chances are she might win against the queen. In all honesty, she's way stronger than what... Uh, Freya was when Freya challenged her own mother, so who knows what's gonna happen. But okay, guys, let's jump into it. We're gonna blow out the candles, see what trait she gets last, and what sort of hint that might give us about her character. But I am very, very excited. Uh, it's been honestly like I have fun playing with these ladies, but just I mean, mainly I don't really like playing unless I'm recording. I don't really spend a lot of time playing at all unless I'm recording, unless I'm working on a project for the channel behind the scenes. So it's not as fun to be playing the ladies without you guys here following, but I had to get it done behind like, you know, off camera because I do want to get episode one of season three out on Christmas. So, okay, she's a loner, an active sim, and let's see what all her training and interaction in the castle has gotten her. What sort of personality has she ended up with? So we're going to randomize. If it doesn't fit, then I'm going to change it. That's what I normally do. But let's see. I don't think she's... I mean, come on. She's a loner and she's active and she does not give me the bro vibe. So we'll try again. 
a romantic vibe. You know what? I find that very interesting with the rose because you guys kept saying when she aged up that she reminded you all of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. So I I don't know. That's kind of funny and I feel like it might suit. I guess she follows in her mother's step in that aspect. If I am to think how that relates to her character, then I mean, I guess I could say I feel as though she, out of all the princesses or, you know, children, she's kind of grown up out of the public eye. She was born a lot later in Narcissa's reign, and her existence has been kept very private and to a certain extent secretive. Like, to a certain extent, a secret. Um, and so maybe she, because of that loneliness, She's kind of, and the burden of, you know, becoming the, the or, or being the prodigy and becoming the next queen, maybe that burden has kind of resulted in her wanting a lifelong partner that she can share all of her own, I, don't, I wouldn't say desires, but her own, like, happiness with and just company with. I think someone that will understand her, because in a lot of ways, she's kind of isolated, not just in her age. She does have Nymphadora, but she's isolated in her responsibilities, her expectations, her role in the coven right now. So I, I think, yeah, that romantic, I guess, does kind of suit, and not the type of romantic that is kind of very charismatic and flirtatious, but the kind of romantic that is very deep rooted and is in search of a partner or a soulmate, you know? That I see that. And I'm sorry for talking so much, but in all honesty, both Athena and Nymphadora, I know nothing about them because I have not been building their characters up. I want to do that on camera with you guys. So they're as much a mystery to me as they are to you. And at times like these, I like talking about a few things here and there just to get um, like their story developing, you know, for the next season and all of those kind of things. But okay, I'm going to accept that. She is an adult. She's an immortal. How exciting! Okay, okay, we're not gonna waste any more time. Honestly, I, f I, don't, I don't know what, like, I don't care what you guys say. She looks, some of you say that she does not look like, um, Narcissa at all. Some of you say she doesn't look like anyone. Some of you say she looks like Sheba. In all honesty, she looks the most, the most like Narcissa to me. I don't know what it is, but to me, she looks the most like Narcissa, and now with that romantic trait, she's starting to seem a lot like Narcissa as well, except I don't think Narcissa was a prodigy. She was kind of like Freya, except she didn't lose and she stepped up to the role, but Athena is probably the strongest vampirist we've ever had of her age, which is huge. So now she and the queen are going to go down. I'm going to get the queen to actually wear her uh, formal robes. Her royal garb with her crown because her daughter is challenging her for the crown and both let's get rid of this hold on a second we have a club gathering going holy cow we built up a lot of points but okay I'm gonna get both and yes I have juiced them all up with some potions so they all have like super good needs but let's see I'm gonna get Narcissa and Athena to be in one group and then they are gonna go down to here they're gonna go there together and then we're gonna have Athena challenge her mother and Frey is not gonna be brought down and just yet she's not gonna be brought down just yet we want to follow Athena and see if they win if she doesn't, then it's up to her sister. And it's practically going to go back and forth until a victor comes out. But at this stage, with both the queen's daughters grown and able to like eligible to challenge her, it's the end of her reign. There is no more waiting around to see who's going to be born next or who's going to be able to challenge her next. I mean, if Athena wasn't born, then Freya probably would have been able to challenge the queen again and again until she basically came out on top. But that's not the case, is it? That is not the case. And a lot of you lovelies are saying that you don't know anymore whether you want Athena to win or you want Freya to be queen. Um, you kind of, <laughs> I think especially after her makeover, like Athena's makeover, you guys are vying for both of them. 
But okay, we're not going to waste any time, everyone. And we are basically going to, let's see, spar. And I did get her to, to fight, um, let's see, Clara. So I did get Bella, jeez. I keep, now I'm going to call her Bella. Holy cow. I did get Athena to spar with Clara, and she did come out on top. So she can go ahead. Normally, actually, I don't think there's a rule saying they have to wait until they're immortals before they fight the warrior. So she did fight, and she came out on top. So I feel like it's fair to go ahead, and as soon as she's aged up, to challenge the queen. But here we go, guys. Here we go. Episode 102. <laughs> okay. Who's going to be the next queen? Is it going to be Athena? I mean, she's the most powerful vampires of her age. Oh. I'm anticipating it's going to be her. I think it's going to be her. <gasps> she beat the queen! Oh my goodness. She has beat her own mother. She has risen to the top. And with that, guys, Narcissa is going to have to put down the crown and hand it over to her daughter, Athena, our Generation 3 queen. That means I can actually end right over here, but I'm not going to make the episode that short. I'm not going to put you guys through that. Okay, I'm not going to play all the ladies a whole heap, but I do want to talk about a few things. So I feel like since this is like the finale episode unexpectedly, I'm just going to go ahead and address a few things that I wanted to or have been on my mind for a while. So, one of the things is the castle. So, I have been working on another castle in Oasis Springs. Um, I mentioned that before, a death trap. So, I have been working on that. And I am 30 like th around 30% complete. So, hopefully I'll be able to get that done because from episode 1 of season 3, I want to just move the ladies to that new castle and get them started off there. Now, the one problem we have is what's going to happen to all the old generation ladies. And I'm thinking this time around what I'm going to do. Um, should I let the ladies wander? Yeah, I'll let the ladies wander so you guys don't get bored of me talking. Because you might, just in case. Um, I know not all of you watch the videos while I talk. You kind of just like listening to me talk while you do other things. But for those of you who do watch the screen, I'm just going to let the ladies kind of do what they want so that you guys don't get bored. But um, did I turn that on? Yeah, I did. Okay, but with the older generation, so generation two, I'm thinking of leaving them at this castle and just starting generation three with the generation three ladies at the new castle. But what I will do is that we will still have the fire tribute and whenever we decide to do that, I'm just gonna jump back in with um, the generation two ladies and we'll carry out the fire tribute. But we won't get them to kind of be in the same castle with the Generation 3s. Just so we can develop the Generation 3 stories without getting too cluttered, like cluttered with what's going to happen with our Generation 2 ladies. I'm thinking that's what I want to do. And also, I don't want you guys to have to wait before we see the new castle. I want that to be like the Christmas surprise for you all. So I think we're going to jump straight into that. And a few other things. Um, I'm... I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep the video length to 20 minutes. Um, I might decide to put it to 30. I'm not entirely sure. You guys can let me know what amount you would like more. Do you think you would enjoy a 30 minute video for Vampire Amazon or would you enjoy a 20 minute video? Also, from the next season, I'm not going to be doing machinimas at the end of every single episode. I mean, yeah, they're not super long. They're like one minute, but... In all honesty, it's especially when I have like five, six different stuff, like games that I'm following in, on my channel and series that I'm doing, it gets a little bit stressful and tiring having to think about all these things and, you know, um, develop the, the story forcefully. Uh, because that's kind of what the mission is. I am kind of 
making a judgment at the end of every episode and creating a story out of it, it gets a little bit stressful. And especially if I'm putting out these episodes like once every day, which sometimes I am doing. So I'm thinking I'm not going to do machinimas from the next season. I'll kind of just have the episode and we'll, we'll develop the story within the episode itself through gameplay. Um, unless I have like a certain scene that I want to put in that's going to drive the story forward. And um, for those reasons, I might do a machinima then. But it's only going to be sometimes, not always. So that's one of the changes that I'm going to make. Another change I'm going to be making is um, my accent. So in this series, I talk in a different accent than I normally do in all my other videos. And the reason for that is that when I started, like very early on, I had a bunch of YouTubers that I used to watch. It's not so much imitating, but... It, there is a bunch of YouTubers I used to watch, and when I started this series, it was very early in my, you know, YouTubing career, and at that point in time, when I used to talk, when I used to record, I automatically started talking like the YouTubers I used to watch, or the simmers that I used to watch. And so, it took me a while to kind of get used to speaking the way I normally do, or at least having the, like, you know, my normal accent in my videos. But since that's practiced and I can do that now, I, I prefer kind of speaking that way, especially because almost all my videos now are how I norm like normally talk. Uh, but I decided when I did like season two that I would continue speaking the way I spoke in generation one because I didn't want people to kind of come in for a certain sound and then get turned off in the middle of a series because suddenly the way I was talking changed. And I wanted consistency for you guys, but I think I can end it at the end of the second season and then from the next season I'll talk how I normally talk. So let me know if you guys are okay with that or if it bothers you. I'm pretty sure if you guys watched like the um, Crystal Cave episodes that I had, the three videos I had for Crystal Caves, I was talking in like my normal Australian accent in those videos so you guys kind of know how I sound but I don't think it bothers a lot of you because you have watched like several of my videos from different series and you guys see especially my update videos I talk normally there and you guys seem fine with that but that was something I wanted to get out of the way so basically all the changes admin stuff I'm taking you guys through in this episode um, also, I do want to give all the late, like all the Generation Three ladies, so Persephone, Ursula, Freya, Athena, Nymphadora. I don't know about Nymphadora. Uh, Nymphadora, maybe, maybe. No, I'm not gonna do Nymphadora because she's gonna age up. Let's see when she's gonna age up on Saturday, so it'll probably already be in season three. And then when she ages up into an immortal, I'll give her a makeover then. And plus, she had one really recently. I'm gonna give all the Generation 3 ladies a makeover, including Athena as queen. So we'll have all of that happening when we come back in the next episode. They will be made over. Also, I know um, one of you or some of you suggested in this series um, to keep the type of intro you like we have because you really like that kind of intro. But I know several times when we had certain members of the coven die, you guys said that I should go ahead and change the sims we have in the intro for each of the roles if someone dies and gets replaced. Initially I said I didn't want to do that, but I think from the next season that's the system I'm going to have. So whenever someone dies and gets replaced, like if we have a new scholar or a new like priestess or warrior, then I'm going to go ahead and actually change the sims that we have in the intro. So hopefully you guys like that. I had something else in my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know uh, one of you lovelies in, like, one of the Generation 1 episodes quite recently actually said you would enjoy it more if it if uh, I played with the Royal mod. And the thing is, when Season 1, when I started playing that, the Royal mod didn't exist. And it only actually came out, I think, r quite recently. I think it came out this year. So I was already like more than halfway done with season two when that came out. And I don't like making random switches because I love consistency. So I didn't do that. But I think from season three, I'm going to basically from episode one, download the royal mod. I'm going to see how it is. We're going to try playing around with that and see if that enhances our like 
challenge and if that's going to make the story much more fun. I do like some of the things. I have looked into it and I do like some of the things that I see. So I definitely want to try that out. Now, I don't know if there's anything else I can think of off the top of my head. If you guys have any suggestions, any concerns, opinions, whatever else it is that you want to let me know, then please go, go ahead and do that in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. I think that's about all I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, it would be really cool if you guys let me know your favorite character in this entire season. Um, if you guys would let me know your favorite moment or like story plot point, what did you like the best, or even your favorite episode. That would be really fun to go ahead and know because we've been playing this for the entire year, almost entirely. So I think it'll be really fun to go back and just reflect on that. And oh yeah, I think you guys also said that you wanted um, a video on the family lineage, like lineages, so we could kind of have a little bit of a backtrack on who was related to who and you know, all of those kind of things, like a family tree. You wanted to go through the family tree for all the Sims we've had since generation one. So I'll probably do that as a separate video, but I will try and get that out before season three as well. Probably at the end of this let's play, like, I mean, this playlist in all honesty. So it'll probably be the next video for this playlist that I put out to have a recap before we have episode one on Christmas. But guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.